So we determined that this takes up 13 pixels. So we're going to want for consistency here to have 13 pixels above, 13 pixels below. So that means that we need the height of this to be 39 pixels, right? 13 plus 13 plus 13. So here's how you change that in Photoshop. You go to Image, Canvas Size, and we want to add just to, well, actually it doesn't even really matter. In fact, I'll, I'll leave it right here at the default. What the default is, is if you change one of these numbers, it adds in all directions. But since we're only going to change the height, it's going to, with 39, it's going to make up the difference. It's going to put a little on the top and a little on the bottom, which is fine because we haven't positioned anything critical yet. So I click OK, and now our canvas size becomes a little bit bigger. Okay, so now what we want to do is give us some help here so that we can figure out where to place this. A, a super easy way to do this is to just go up to Preferences and then go to Grids, Guides, and Slices and we'll make a grid line every, in this case we'll go every 13 pixels and we don't want any subdivisions inside we just want 13 pixel big boxes so we click OK and then we need to turn on the guide so that we can see them so we go to view then we go to show and then we go to grid and so there is our grid and so we just need to place this so that it starts right about there so we have 13 pixels above 13 pixels below 13 pixels on the left now we want to figure out how to get 13 and I'm gonna tell you from experience that you should always put just a little bit more on the right side so we would want to go 13 it's probably about 15 pixels on the right you don't have to go a huge amount more the reason being is that you have either a shadow or a highlight up here and it just makes it look like there's not enough room if you don't give it just a little bit more there. Here's an example for you. It feels to me like there's more room here than here, even though I put approximately, uh, I think I'd use the same numbers, 13 pixels all around here. So we're just going to compensate a little bit for that. But now, how do we want to do this? One, you could turn the rulers on and you know count out pixels but that's a bit much to ask yourself to do and if you don't have the rulers on by the way command R or you can go into the view menu and turn rulers on and off um, but what I'm gonna do the technique I'm gonna use is I'm gonna reset the zero point using this right here so right now the zero point is here in here right up at the top left hand corner but if I go up to the top left hand corner where the two rulers meet I can click drag out a brand new starting point and so what I want to do is now you, you have to you can't always place it right at the edge of the letters You usually in, in the case of rounded things want to place it in just a little bit to be your zero point now if you had a nice completely perfect edge here like in the H then you would place it right here but it's just the difference between aligning circles and square circles don't feel right if you if you line them right at their tangent so come in a little bit here. That starts the guide over from here. So 13 pixels from here would be about there. But again, I'm going to go just a little bit more. And so that, since we're zoomed in so far, we can see the effect of one pixel to another. So like right about there, that takes us 13, there's 15. So that's what I'm going to go with. So now this guide becomes the, the end, if you will, of this button. Let me double click on the hand tool here just so yeah. So that, that's everything there. Now what we need to do is figure out how far it is from here to here and we need to then make the other states for a button. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to come back up here, we're going to double click and uh, that resets the zero point to right here and now we're going to look at where we are in the rulers. So if you can't see it this clear then just make sure that uh, you're zoomed in enough and if you're seeing any other unit of measurement other than pixels then right click inside of the rulers or control click 
and select the unit that you want. So that's what inches looks like. This way we're going to go to pixels. And so 70, 1, 2, yeah, 3, 4, 5. So it, it's 72 pixels is the width for each state of the button. So what we need to do is remember that number, multiply it by 3, and that's how wide we need this to be. So once again, we go into image, we go into canvas size, and we're going to change our width. Now this time we do have things set up. We have our perfect placement over here. So this time we're going to change where it grows from. And so all I'm going to do is down here click right there, and that means that anything that I add in here will only add over this way and up and down, but I'm not going to change the height. So 72 times 3 is what? 210, 216. Click OK. And now if I double click on the hand, it'll bring everything in, into view. So now what we can do to make things easy so we don't have to do any more counting is once again, we'll change our grid size. So we go to Photoshop, Preferences, and remember on a PC it's Edit Preferences, not Photoshop Preferences. Again, go into the grids, the guides, and this time we'll just change this to 72 and keep the subdivisions at 1. And then now we have a mark here. And we have one here. It's just hard to see because this guides here. So if I don't want to see the guides anymore, Command colon gets rid of the, the, the mark. Now what I'm going to do is make some copies of the word home here. So I'm going to go over to my layers panel, which you should see here by default. But if you do not, just go to window and layers, and that will come up or F7. So click here, make that come up. Now I want three copies of this layer that we ended up with by default. As soon as we took the text tool, typed the word home, we ended up with this layer. I want two more copies of this. Quick way to do that, just click on that layer in question and do Command J once, twice. We now have three layers. And I'm going to name these the, the states that they are. So just the, the regular way we see the logo. I'm just double clicking in there. I'm going to call this hover and I'll call this CUR for current. So there's the three states of the logo. Now I'm going to just close this, get that out of the way. And well, actually, I just don't have a whole lot of screen real estate here, but I do need to select the one that I want to move. So I want to move the hover one over and I want to move it in here. Now I'm not just going to guess at this because this needs to be really precise because we just want the state of the button to change. We don't want the word home jumping around. So I'm going to click on it with this um, selection tool. And now remember, there's three of these sitting right on top of each other. Whichever one I highlight here is the one that's going to move. So I click, drag. I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I can't move it up and down. It'll only move in the, the, the most positive, or, you know, the biggest direction that I'm dragging. Now I'm going to look really close at the numbers that are that show me where I'm moving I'm gonna move it exactly 72 pixels As soon as it's where I want it I'll release the mouse then release the shift key now I need to move the one over for the regular state as well or I'm sorry for the current state so I'll select that layer close my layer panel just to give me a little more room and then I need to move this one twice that distance so 72 twice is 144 so we move that 144 and there we go now we just need to make the background for our button so once again we'll open up the layers panel and I'm just going to click here to create a new layer and I want to draw in the shape and the appropriate color that I want so first thing I'm going to do is set the color now I can do that over here. I can also use swatches to do it. So if I open up the swatches and let's say we just want a light gray here. So we'll go with this one and usually it'll tell you like what percentage gray. Let's try a, yeah, let's go 20% gray. So I'll click on that one. It fills that color in here. Then when I grab the tool that I'm about to 
uh, that'll be the color that the tool paints. So what I want is the, the, the one of the tools located in here, I'm not the actual rectangle tool, which is loaded right now. So I'll hold this down. I'll grab the rounded rectangle tool. And then now I want to make sure that up here in this options bar, that shape is selected for what, what I'm going to create with this rounded rectangle. And then again, just make sure that this color showed up here and you don't want any stroke on it. Um, this is telling you if you did have a stroke, how big it would be. And then the other thing is how big of a radius do you want on those corners? This is something you'll have to experiment with. I'll try a value of seven just to see what that looks like. Okay, so now with the tool, I click right at the zero point here, and I'm going to click and drag right from zero right to this corner. And it should tell me in there that it is 72 pixels wide by 39 pixels tall. I released the mouse button. Now it did cover that, and that's just because that layer is on top. So I'm going to come over here, drag the layer down. Now once again, I need three copies of this. So with this layer selected, Command J, Command J, and then let's go ahead and, and name these the same names that we have just to keep from getting confused. Hover, regular, and current. Okay, and then once again, we're going to take the current, take the move tool, move it over. You can hold down the shift key to help, but I'm looking to make sure that that says 72. I'm going to grab the current, drag, make sure that that says 144, and let me just back up a step here, get the closest guy out. And this one just looks like the corners are not right. It looks like they're, you know, that it's not rounded, but remember you're just seeing that little bit underneath of the, uh, the transparency grid. So everything is good here. Now we just need to make some changes to the buttons. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use layer effects to do this. So I'm going to fly open the layers. I'm going to go to the current button. And I'm going to click on the FX panel. And now just a word of caution with these things is you just don't want to overdo it and make the button look cheesy or make your site look you know, kind of dated. Um, Okay, let me cancel out. Actually, I want to start with the regular state of the button here first. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to click on the layer FX icon, then I'm going to go to bevel emboss. And like to me, that's too much a little on the gaudy side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the depth way, way down. I'm going to go all the way to say two with the depth. Now you probably want to write these numbers down because if you're making more than one set of buttons, you're going to want to remember what you did. And if it didn't work, you're going to want to remember what you need to change. But I'm, So I'm going to write down two and two here. Now, the, the shading, usually this default angle of 120 degrees works pretty well. And you generally want to choose this setting of use global light so that if you use more than one effect inside of here, they automatically um, look like the, you know, the sun or the light source was in the same place. So that's really all I need to do for this one. That's going to add a little bit of three-dimensionality to my button. Now I want to go to the hover state. And what we said we wanted to do uh, to this on the outset was to make it look like it was slightly depressed. So I'm going to go to inner shadow. And you notice we're, we're just pretty much back in the same dialog box. It's just that instead of bevel emboss, now we're putting on an inner shadow. And by the way, if you wanted to add more than one, than one effect to something, this is how you do it, is just select another one. But you can see that it kept our, um, our angle of 120 degrees. It now will put a shadow on there. And oh, I am on the wrong state uh, somehow or I just named them incorrectly. So let me fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm working on the correct button and, and as you can see, that's a pretty hefty shadow that's on there right now. So that would look like it was depressed in. So I, let's see what happens if I change this to two. Just make sure I tab out of there and with the preview button checked, we'll see what it looks like. Hmm, even that seems like a lot. Um, just changing the distance here. Oh, you know what, no, let me change the, uh, the size. 
tab key again. That's quite a bit better. Maybe let's see what this looks like back at five. Nope. 